Um, special actions, none. Uh, presentation, the 2018 Fire and Emergency Service Study, Dr. Harry Car Carter, PhD. If you want to come up and present. Mr. Chairman, we, <clears throat> we asked Dr. Harry Carter to uh, come to the board meeting tonight to, to briefly review um, the fire study that has been published. Uh, it's both on our website as well has been uh, distributed in your packets for your review. Uh, I appreciate you coming tonight, Dr. Carter. You're, you're quite welcome. I, uh, you have my report, and I'd like to simply ask, do you have any questions that I can handle at this time on my report? I had the pleasure... Well, I'm sure the board has questions, but is there anything that you want to... Well, no, I just wanted to state questions? that I've had the pleasure of working with a really fine group of firefighters here in your community. They uh, were extremely helpful. They guided me during my journey. And uh, matter of fact, they're tonight here. Hopefully they'll ask questions too. But again, I'll be pleased to answer whatever questions you have. Excellent. Open it up to the board. Why don't we go down one by one? We'll start with Dennis if you have any questions. Um, just a general overall uh, question. It seemed like you had many positives to say about the, the status of our, of our fire department and of our fire, fire response, that, that we're doing well in, in many different areas. Seem, and I get just the general sense of the report was, even though we're doing well, we have some challenges ahead. And uh, you outlined maybe four or five, if, tell me if, I'm, if I miss anything drastic. Um, training, uh, organization, and maybe like team building is needed. Uh, of course, we have to um, address our apparatus and the location of the of the um, of the firehouse or the firehouse that is be relocated. Um, and, and, am I capturing the general sense of it? That is the sense of my report. I. Uh I don't like to create problems where no problems exist. But in those situations where I saw things which I felt I must comment on, I did. The issue of the fire stations was based upon a review of a, a map of the borough and the township provided to me by the fire department, which indicated the location of all of the responses to emergencies over the last three years. And it's not like they were in one spot. They were all over the place. However, interesting point. The area where the station originally was supposed to go that's now a large open lot probably would have been a much low, better location than this uh, facility up the hill because you're right near the next town. You're, you're really in a hole when it comes to going out. But, uh, these things are all in the report, and you can move forward. Okay. That's the gist of my question. Yeah, I have a question relating to that, because uh, you said that the location, um, I think you recommended because of the response times, and you had a, a table of response times, and you said that the average time range between uh, average on scene times range between nine minutes and five seconds to 10 minutes and 30 seconds. Is that correct? That is correct. Your fire department was kind enough to go through their records and lay out all of the response times for me. Thank you, the viewer, nice job. But on our page 64, I believe, you said the Fire Protection Handbook uh, 20th edition suggests that a volunteer fire department may be reasonably expected to arrive at the scene of an incident within 12 minutes of discovery. So if our response times are on average less than that, why do you recommend relocating the firehouses? Because in addition to the response time which is indicated, the incident has to be discovered and then reported and then the fire department has to be dispatched and each of those adds a time factor into the response. So those numbers on that table do not include all of this? No, no. But again, 
most departments that I study are, are similarly challenged. I'm doing a study in New Jersey right now that they're far more challenged than you are, as you're operating out of a station that's pretty much like this station protecting a whole township. So in that case, I'm recommending a new firehouse for it. But in your case, you know, like all consulting reports, the information can be used or the information can be disregarded. Right. I mean, the uh, land that you're talking about, I believe, is privately owned. So, number one, we would have to purchase that land, correct? And I would assume that, yes. Uh, construct a new building. And I would assume there was always a cost and, involved. Uh, that would mean probably new taxes, I guess. Probably, yes. I, uh, okay. as chairman of the Board of Commissioners at home, I was uh, in charge of building a new station 11 years ago, and 11 years ago, the new station cost us nearly 45, 45 no, $4,500,000. We had a bond, and then we had to use surplus, which luckily we had a lot of surplus, but uh, 10 years on, much more expensive. Right. Um, regarding the apparatus, because this was originally uh, something to a report to tell us what kind of apparatus was necessary and I guess it has bloomed into something much bigger. But, um, you know, I've heard from other sources that uh, maybe some of the equipment that's being recommended to be purchased is not really necessary. Can you explain um, this? Uh, you recommended to replace as soon as possible uh, some kind of uh, fire engine with, I don't know, you mentioned 75 foot ladder and so on and so forth. Uh, is that something that you feel is really required? Why is that uh, type of equipment required? Well, the chief and I discussed that at point. The unit that is being replaced should have been replaced a long time ago. A fire truck with 130 some thousand miles on it could fall apart at any moment. So in discussing the response of the career staff, the chief asked me what I thought about purchasing the unit that I've indicated. Uh, it's not a major sized aerial device, and it's what we call a quintuple firefighting apparatus. It's got water, hose, ladders, aerial, and personnel and all of that. And it would be equipped so that the daytime staff, career staff, would be able to roll out to anything and have the rescue equipment and the firefighting equipment and the necessary foam to do their job. And of course it would be available around the clock to the uh, support staff who could respond after hours. Okay. The other piece of equipment I didn't know much about was the uh, quick <coughs> response vehicle that you recommended for the career staff. Can you explain how that's used? Yeah, the quick response vehicle is sent out to back up the uh, local ambulance unit. It's two people, it has equipment on it. Uh, it it's, in my world, it's first aid stuff. But the, uh, the career unit has a lot of miles on it. The volunteer unit is in pretty good shape, but at some point in the future, they too should get a new unit. But as I say in my report, that's to be based upon mileage and, and use. The one thing that keeps you going the one thing that I can say is why you have a truck with 133,000 miles on it. Your staff takes good care of the equipment. I, uh, I wish more departments that I study took the interest in maintaining their equipment like you do. Yeah. The only one I can think of that's as good is my fire department at home. But the chief engineer is one of the commissioners and he's retired now and he's over there fixing something every day. I'll just add that I drove by one of the uh, station houses this afternoon and they were washing a truck or, you know, cleaning it up, whatever. So. The last uh, thing that I had was about, <clears throat> can you, you recommended a combination fire department format and I wasn't quite clear what you meant by a combination fire department sure. format. A combination fire department is one department that is career and volunteer under the same constitution bylaws. Right now you have 
a career staff, and you have a volunteer staff, but they operate like parallel units going down the road. What I'm suggesting is that they come together and the rank structure be changed to cover having deputies and battalion chiefs and captains and lieutenants in each station. So that's what a, what a combination department is. Well, thank you very much. You're quite welcome. Thank you. Yeah, I have some questions. Uh, regarding the location of a firehouse that you've done your report, uh, the way I look at the Newtown Township, the borough is kind of in the middle. Um, do you see a huge difference moving just outside the borough as far as response time goes by building a firehouse? The chief and I discussed this at length. And it was his opinion, and I agreed with him, that moving it out of the borough would reduce the times in many areas. But now you see, with any consulting report, you can accept my findings, you can reject my findings, but there's a third part that I like when it happens. You take my findings and you start thinking to come up with what you believe you need. Because this is your community. I'm a visitor. I was treated kindly by all of the members of the fire department. Uh, I'd like to say you have some nice restaurants downtown too. But according to my doctor's visit today, we're going to stop that. Thank you. Uh, You're quite welcome. Now, uh, well, I have some further questions sure. regarding personnel. You, you recommended hiring additional permanent staff, if I recall. I, I suggest that based upon increasing the period of time which they respond from five days a week to seven days a week. Now, you ask, why would I recommend that? In society today, the weekends are when you do things. And my fire department has the exact same problem. I mean, on weekends, we get the trucks out, but instead of getting 20 or 30 people out, maybe we get 15 to 18. So the idea is to have the career staff rolling out quickly Monday through Sunday. And that would require additional staff. How many? That would be up to the department to determine. But uh, that was the reason for that. So it, it, the recommendation for seven days in the weekend is not based on a higher call volume on the weekend, it's just a matter of turnout? Turnout, yes. Okay. When is the highest? Do you recall when the highest time period generally is, where the most calls? Well, I don't recall. In a review of the uh, runs, your department is like all departments I've ever studied. A lot more calls during the day than during the evening and overnight. Now, what does this do? Well, it puts a strain on you because there are less volunteers around during the day. What you, well, you're participating in a regional mutual aid agreement, automatic aid coming from other towns. I was privileged to see it work when you had the fire over at the new middle school a few months ago. And they, uh, they got in here really quick and knocked that fire down. I mean, they did a great job, but people were coming from a lot of different departments. And that day, your rescue got on the road, your, your aerial got on the road. It was just a good response that day. The next day, it could have been totally different. But that's why Chief Forsyth has set up the arrangements uh, through the county to have other towns roll in automatically to back you up. Okay, thanks. Uh, one more, circle back again to the location of the building. Not totally clear it would improve the call times that much. Is the building in the borough sufficient to handle to be the main firehouse? You you could remain as you are today should you choose. Right, I understand that, but in your opinion, do you think that's the way a good way to go? No. I'll stand by my report. Okay. All right, that's all I have, thank you. Okay, you follow up on one of the uh, Sure, absolutely. Uh, in terms of going to a seven-day staffing, are there some, and I look for it in the report, maybe I just missed it, are there some demonstrable steps that we could take towards that, and rather than jumping, you know, making that change all at once, are there some interim steps that we could improve our coverage over the weekend? Not really, because the problem is the uneven response of volunteers. 
So going to the career staff would fill in uh, the uneven response. Now it could be that, that you know some days lots of volunteers turn up, and other days not so many. But as I said, it's you don't know what you're going to get until the pager goes off and you respond. And are there some recruitment for volunteers? Are there some are there some ways we can recruit volunteers? Probably it is going on, and I just don't. I'm not aware of it. They are doing a lot of that. They're going out into the community, they're meeting people, they're visiting other organizations. Mm -hmm. But the trouble is, if somebody belongs to another organization, they're tied up in the other organization. And I gotta tell you, after being in the volunteer fire business for huh, 45 years, I get my, my award at the banquet next month. Mm -hmm. After 45 years, it isn't getting any easier. Uh, Dr. Carter, can, I'm just going to ask you questions because there's a lot of people out there that didn't read this. Sure. So I'm just going to ask some questions that maybe the public will be interested in sure. having the answers to. What other comparable communities did you study in comparison to Newtown Township? And, and, and how did they compare uh, size-wise, population-wise, uh, department-wise? Actually, there's one major department that I studied at the exact same time as you. It's Homedale Township, New Jersey. It is a community with a higher median income than yours and a longer median commuting distance than yours. Problem being, people are out of town. People are not available in town. And your community, like far too many communities, does not provide jobs which a volunteer staff could, could get and use to provide sufficient money to live in town. It, it all circles around money, Your Honor. That's, that's just the way it is. Um, I'm not Your Honor. You know. I'm sorry. Being a New Jersey guy, it comes out naturally. But that's basically the problem. It's all well, about money. Everything is based on money, no matter, no matter what, what you're saying here. But, but a, lot, a lot of what you're, you're, you're giving us is your speculations of what we should be doing in regards to the seven days a week. Um, like you had mentioned, well, one day it could happen this way, the next day it could happen that way. Well, if we could all predict the future, we would know what to prepare for as, as things went on. M my question is, why haven't we needed uh, seven days a week of the paid uh, personnel now and has there been anything that has been detrimental that has happened that would require us at this moment in time now you could say hey next year things may change absolutely but we're looking at today the present why hasn't that happened already I can't say exactly why okay so you're just you're just I'm looking your at I'm looking at that. the department as I reviewed it and I interviewed quite a number of the members, and that was a pretty common statement about weekend availability among the people that I interviewed. So if the people that are going to be coming are telling me weekends is when they go out with their families or do things, that tells me the story. And the chief indicated that it was his opinion that the time would be correct now to make the next step. So I looked at what I had reviewed, and uh, I agreed with the chief. Okay. Now, how about, in, you said that, um, you made the statement that this firehouse right here takes care of the whole township. But isn't there a time period of when that is done and then when the volunteers take over? And also, have you taken into consideration that on the northern end we are uh, assisted by Lingenhock and the southern end we have uh, Lower Makefield, and in the center, we can even say we have Upper Makefield. Does that give us ample coverage for the time being, knowing that we do have... Now, now I know what you're going to say, that they may be called out on some other other issues. Well, I hadn't even thought about that, but thank you. Well, well I'll just, just throw that out. Sure. Of course that may happen. But I mean, as far as coverage is, we, we, 
The surrounding area is basically covered by four different station houses. You are, you are part of that regional mutual aid agreement that I spoke of, and those are departments that are in it. That's uh, a good starting point. But, as I said, I think more should be brought on board. Okay. Now, what, uh, just as far as the timeline is, is uh, taking into effect, what, what kind of timeline are we looking at? To, and, and again, in your opinion, uh, say over stages, how do you think that this should improve? Well, it should play out over the next 12 months. You shouldn't do a lot one day. You should take a while to think about it and come up with a plan and then phase the plan in over time. Can I have a follow-up on that? Sure. But do you think, you mentioned a sort of a reorganization in terms of uh, officers of reporting and, and uh, new mission statement or whatnot. Shouldn't that be done first in terms of uh, the structure of the, of the personnel? That's correct. The, the structure, well, that's why the recommendation for that is right up front in the recommendations. They should become a combination fire department. The table of organization should change. The new officer should be appointed, things should happen. And then these other things should be brought along over time. Thank you. Have you addressed anything in regards to cost? And the reason I'm asking that oh, is no. that naturally no. the township is bigger in population, bigger in area. Um, the cost factor of the township covering the borough, how, how should the uh, distribution of payment, so to speak, be done between township and borough in this case? That's a, a tricky track question, but I'll jump into the well, track. Well, it's dollars and cents. I mean, Do we're, dollars, we're, I couldn't tell you. I really couldn't tell you. But I would suggest that representatives from the career department, the volunteer fire department, the administrator, and one or two members of your Board of Supervisors should come together and figure out who should pay when. That's, that's generally how we do it at home. But it's easy for me, because the Board pays for everything in the fire district. But we come together with the fire company. Fire commissioners under contract with fire company. But we all come together to discuss what should be in the budget. Since we've had the same budget number for about a dozen years now, we've been 1.1 million for about a dozen years, and uh, pretty much when we buy something new, we can buy cash. We've got enough money that we're going to buy a new aerial cash year after next. But because we sit down and we talk, we know. Okay. Any other questions? Anybody have any comments uh, from the public? Speak now. Yeah. Huh? You got something? Sure. Hi, hey, Chief. I'll step out of the way here. Thank you, sir. I just want to make a brief statement. Uh, Chief Gerhardt from the Newtown Fire Association. We just wanted to thank the Board of Supervisors for their continued support in public safety, uh, the residents of the township and the borough for their continued support over time. Uh, we'd like to thank Dr. Carter for his work in uh, providing a fire service study. We look forward to a further review of the information, and uh, we've already started moving forward with some of the recommendations operationally um, that Dr. Carter had provided. We'd like to provide a formal statement regarding the information, progress, and planning within the next 60 days of both the township and the public, so uh, any questions that you may have for us at the time, we have to answer. Well, if we don't have any now, I'm sure there's some that will pop in our heads. Sure as soon as you leave, I'm sure there'll be I'm some. Sure there'll be plenty. But I, I appreciate all the work you've done, all, all the work everyone has done. And um, I, I guess my question is, I don't know if our manager can answer this or maybe Dr. Carter. What, um, in, in the process, what would our next step be? Well, I think, I think it's pretty clear we need to replace the, the one truck. I think the next step in the process is, is again, just like Dr. Carter had said, I think we need to sit down uh, with the parties that are, that are all involved here and come up with 
a purchase plan for for the new vehicle for uh, either 2020 or 2021. Okay. On top of that, also at the uh, fire association going to be putting together a committee to work with Chief Forsyth to start prioritizing some of the operational and administrative um, goals that were laid out in the study to start moving forward with the rest of them as well. Great. Sounds good.